I've been using Blackboard going on 10, 12 years. You know, that I started with it at Virginia Tech when I was doing my PhD. The first institution I was at used Blackboard. Now we're using it here. So I like the buttons. And being a Clemson graduate, I, of course, made them tiger stripe for, for the students to see. Um, again, I got rid of the home page. I detested that it's too busy, can't see anything anyway. So I switched straight to announcements. And my first announcement is, well, syllabus. Download the syllabus before watching the introduction video that's in the Start Here tab so that you've got it. I may should say download and print, but a lot of students now don't want to print anything anyway. So once they're there, you know, hopefully they will clue in that once they've downloaded the syllabus, they should go to the start here. And then from there, I've got my syllabus as well, course schedule for the year, and it's for the entire semester laid out day by day. It's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday class, and they know for every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, what topic we're supposed to be talking about, what section in the textbook that is, and what example problems they should be doing for that chapter. You want to give people a little background why you're teaching and who these Sure. Uh, I am teaching Engineering 335, which is Engineering Economics. So it's looking at how do you economically justify projects that you're doing. Uh, along with that, I also teach them how credit card interest rates really work, how mortgage <laughs> loan interest rates really work, and car loan rates work. The stated rate isn't really what they're charging you, but it's much more than that because of compounding. And so they need to learn what compound interest is and how, how to use it, how to apply it. And then we apply those concepts into the industrial world, looking at rate of return and how much money do I want to make off of this project. And so then what do I have to charge to get there? Um, so syllabus now I have my introduction, which is a voice thread which is actually me talking through the syllabus in the beginning of the course, so I go through the entire syllabus. I converted the syllabus over to PowerPoint and then use VoiceThread and talk to each one to go all the way through. Uh, then I have mine just set up by chapter. Do, 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 do. Try that again. Um, we do have John in there. Uh, yeah, it's been slow today. There we go. There we go. So I first provide them with a glossary of terms and concepts so that they can know any terminology they need throughout the rest of the semester if they choose to download it. And then I just go through chapter by chapter, which is what I do in the normal class. I'm using, in this case, a supplied textbook with their supply PowerPoint lecture notes because They've done a good job, and there's no reason for me to reinvent the wheel when they've got it there for me. Um, and I teach almost exclusively juniors and seniors. Um, I haven't had to teach freshmen and sophomores in about eight years, and it's wonderful. <laughs> um, and then I teach at the graduate level as well. I teach this course at the graduate level as well as the undergraduate level. I just use different textbooks. Uh, we also, as part of our accreditation, have to cover certain ethics information. So I give them the engineering code of ethics provided by the National Council of Engineers. Uh, I also downloaded an updated ethics terminology, so they know things like whistleblower and conflict of interest, and those topics. So when they're reading those in the code, they know what it means. And then I. Uh, the NCES, who is providing the Engineering Code of Ethics, also gives every case they've looked at for the last decade online in PDF format for you to evaluate. So I've downloaded several cases. I put them up and tell them, look at them. You'll have at least one to discuss, not for a grade, but you can see how they're discussing them and how they make their decision. Because come test time, I'm going to give you a scenario where you have to say whether you think it was ethical, why and why not you think it was ethical for what they were doing. And it's everything from uh, accepting gifts from suppliers to visiting faculty, seeing students cheat on tests and what's ethical for them to do and not ethical for them to do according to our own engineering body. 
Uh, the textbook publisher also provides podcasts for all of their chapters. So where I do it by chapter, they actually go in and do it by topic area. So where I have one voice thread that says chapter one, and I go through all of my notes for chapter one, they have individual podcasts on select topics within each chapter. But I provide the links for to them. And then I always keep Grade Center up so that they see everything online for their grades. Um, everything from the first quiz until the final exam, including a current grade column that tells them exactly where they're at for everything that's been graded up to that point. And then that's my Blackboard page. So what did you... Um changed throughout this program that is different than what well, you did before. I, I kept going back and forth between, as you saw in the podcast, I had it broken out by test. And if I do it, if I went to the modules, I might go back to that. But for my actual chapter materials, grouping it by test was just an extra layer they had to go through. So I converted it back to just going straight to the Very chapters. Good. And then when they're in the chapter, for each chapter, they see my voice thread presentation. Well, chapter one is not a good one to go to. Let's go back to do like chapter three. They get their voice thread presentation, um, the actual PowerPoint lecture slides, so they can download those and make notes on them as they're going if they want to. Uh, I solve problems. I mean, this class, if you're not solving problems, you're not going to understand what they're doing. So I even have notes within the voice thread that says, stop here, solve these problems, and then go check the solutions to those problems to see if you did it correctly before you keep going. Uh, which we then also give them the chance to ask me questions on those slides and those problems. And then, like I said, in my calendar, I have a list of suggested problems that they're to work outside of class, which is just extra problems for them to work. Because this is also one of the core requirements within our Fundamentals of Engineering exam, which is what they have to pass in order to become a professional licensed engineer in four to eight years, depending on where they're working for and how they're working. Well, so I have to make sure they can solve the problems. Uh, one thing that I would probably like to do going forward, I didn't have time to do it this semester, is instead of just having the word solution, because thankfully they provided the solution manual in Word, so all I had to do was cut and paste over into another Word document to post it up there, is use the live stripe pen and work that out. So you, uh, for those of you who might not know live stripe pen, as I write on a little notebook, there's two versions. One, it goes to a cloud. The other, it goes straight to your iPad. And then as I'm writing and talking, it records both, shows up on the iPad that I can then send as a pen cast, download as a PDF that they can then watch and they see me and hear me solve the problem as I'm going through it. But time-wise, it just wasn't possible this semester. Okay, so the way that you get these voice story presentations set up, mm -hmm. you've got like, <clears throat> comments enabled on the voice story presentations mm -hmm. that they can ask questions about. Yep. Like a certain like concept or, or approach or mm -hmm. procedure or something like on, that? On every slide, I've left it open for mm -hmm. comments. Okay. And so how would you respond then? You, you would respond like by adding another comment on that voice thread slide? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you go back and check those voice the slides? It, it sends a weekly, for me at least, it's sending, it sends me a, a, a daily digest of any comments that have been made. Voice thread sends me a yeah. daily digest. Yeah of any comments that have been made on that slide. Okay. Because as I was building these, I was getting daily updates as to what had been added to the voice thread account. Alex, yeah, we can do that. <laughs> and then Johan had me also create a group so that I have an engineering economics group. No, like the group I got. That, that, that's the only people are going to be right. having access. So then that prevents the entire university from 
seeing them. Although so voice thread is a new thing. You voice thread is new. Um, you had mentioned it, and then I took the online presentation mm -hmm. course from the OLC, and a lot of them there liked it and used it. Um, especially, you know, Panopto can be difficult to use. Um, One thing, even if you don't have like the digest set up, when you log into VoiceThread, little cute yellow bubbles yeah. will appear next to the presentation if there's been new comments. Oh, okay. Well, so it's not. Even if you're not doing the email updates, it still it still There's shows still you. Something that says I need to go in okay. So what did you use um, before uh, when you don't have? Yes, I do have content. Did you use like discussion board? Or what did you use before for these kind of? Oh, I, I. In class, I mean, because it was fa because it was face to face. It's okay. they're right there to answer the questions. So it's not. But is there anything difficult. you would like to get some suggestion from the audience, or is the audience anything? Any questions um, I I've never taught this as a strictly online. I've taught at distance ed, where I had distance sites that could see me remote video at the ah, same time that I'm teaching it. The synchronized. It, it was a synchronous distance ed rather than yeah. the the asynchronous this way. Yeah. Mm. And I enjoyed that because I still get the face to face and I yeah. get the. So, what do you think about this? Like, oh, after you get it built? Um, I think after I get it fully built, which mainly the live scribe is the only thing I have left to go back and do, um, I will change the way I'm teaching the face to face into a flip. Mm. I mean, it, it, because I found Very for nice. most of my content yes. and my lecture notes, yes. I'm lecturing about 15 to 20 minutes and then spending. Mm an hour yes. solving problems. Yes. So if that's all the lecture content I have, right. then I can tell them, go read the text, go watch mm -hmm. my voice thread notes, and then we're going to come in and spend an hour mm -hmm. working problems or this summer three hours working problems and answering questions that you have on the topics because it's the problem solving that right. they need to pass the, the, the FE exam. Do you think it would be beneficial to adding some synchronous readings for your online session? The test will have to be proctored. Ah, okay. um, one, because they're problem solving and I need to see the process. Yeah. Two, um, our accrediting body right. requires right. that we know you exactly. Know we have that service. Right. Okay. And I need to add that to my syllabus. Oh, I have, yes. I've, I've got yes. the information we from. We have some language you can right. use in model. Well, and I've got, I've already got, okay, Nikki's already emailed it. I just haven't had a chance to put okay. it on the syllabus just yet. Just so if anybody don't know, our office provides free project service for everybody come here to take exam if it's required. Or if you have a student out of town, we also provide a screen, a project screening. So they, they don't end up getting a boyfriend in front of the exam. So right. we have some procedure that we screen the project that is assigned. Yeah. So if you feel uh, Proctor is critical for your, your course, um, feel free to take advantage of that. Service. And we want to do that because we, we have a strong conviction that they yes, bet yes. will, they, they want to know that the person taking the test is who's supposed to be. Are you at the exam on Blackboard or paper? Paper. Oh, okay. So they're, they're going to have to come in because yes. I need to see the yes. writing. Sure. Of how they got. Uh, for my class, I'm less concerned about the answer. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's not the answer that matters, it's your process of getting to the answer that's important. Because with the multiple choice exam, they can always just look at the four answers and work backwards and you know, be to get there anyway. <laughs> Truthful. So, anyone else have any suggestions, feedback? It's great. Thank you very much.